Here's a Sony EV DT1 that doesn't turn on. It's a 5 inch Trinitron combo, video 8 combo that, well, has been purchased from eBay for an okayish amount of money for the price they, they go. It unfortunately didn't came didn't come with a remote control, but that doesn't matter because it does have all the controls that you need. There's the back side, it has mono, audio in and out, and it has composite video, and it has that control in. I'm not entirely sure what it does. I need to check the manual. It actually came with the manual, and the device doesn't turn on, so when it's plugged in, you can press the on slash standby button. There's no standby light, it's totally dead. The tube is supposedly fine. I'm not sure where this device came from in detail and what it was used for. I only know that it does have some scratch marks, but apparently it hasn't been smashed or anything regarding the tube is, uh, has been damaged. So nothing, nothing wrong there. I have the original uh, invoice. This thing back in the day was worth... 2,599 Deutsche Marks, which is around today's money, yeah, probably around 2,000 euros of worth of today's money, maybe even the same. I guess this was a very pricey gadget back then. It can do high 8, it can only do video 8, but it can record and play back. It does have a timer function, and I think the first thing that we're going to do is disassemble that thing. I already got the service manual open. And um, I think first a few screws have to come loose. Do you see that? And do you see this? Oh my god, that's that's actually a lot of damage. This looks like Oh, look look at the fuse. Look at the fuse, the fuse blue. And oh god, look at all the crustiness. Look at that. It there is a lot of damage from the capacitor's leakage. Oh no. Well, this is uh this is not very nice. This is this is not very nice to look at. Oh boy, that's oh god, you. Oh, that's a handful. And I think we're going to fix this. Okay. There's a burnt trace as well. This might be the reason uh, why the fuse blew, but I'm not entirely sure. So there, there is um, there is a burnt trace, and this is the input for uh, 12 to 24 volts DC. That's that's a burnt trace for sure, hundred percent. Ah, yeah, look at that. It's disgusting. Stop resisting. Yeah, it's just this one. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of gunk. That is a lot of gunk. Ten forty seven, four hundred seventy, three and thirty, thirty five. Yep. Yeah, we get a paper very good attention to the surrounding the surrounding components 
because the some of them are probably eaten up completely. The diodes, for instance. Luckily, I have the manual for this one. Let's see. Look at this. Look at the crustiness. Mmm. I think the copper's gotten eaten up as well. I think there is a lot of damage to the copper. I have to check this by scrubbing a bit of this area off. But look at the caps. They have spilled all of their guts out onto the board. I did replace the capacitors and also I replaced two resistors because they seemed very suspicious. Uh, these, If they are soaked in the electrolyte, they tend to soak it up and then change value. So that was a 1k and a 10k resistor. So I have it hooked up in a very sketchy way. It's still open and, and stuff. So let's see if uh, it works and what it does. Let's hook it up. I can hear the high voltage. High voltage is gone. Oh, we have a standby light. Okay, so I think I also heard the mechanism do something, so... Oh, something's happening. After this section of the video, I unfortunately don't have any further footage, at least of the issue with the deflection. After I tested the device for a couple of minutes, I noticed that there was a problem on the right side of the image. The CRT was showing the picture without any issues, however, there was a black bar that was showing on the right side of the picture tube. This led me to the assumption of an issue with the deflection part of the TV section of the device. And this is being troubleshooted in the next part of the video. All right, the final um, fault has been determined and it was called solar joints on Q805. And Q805 is the transistor that is, as far as I understand this circuit, determines the horizontal size and is also outputting the horizontal signal towards the size control and the LC8 board. Uh, and um, therefore, I, I just verified it. Um, the picture is now fully uh, stretched to the left and to the right. And now I'm going to make the final adjustment. So we had cold solder joints finally on the Q805. We had a broken uh, 7812, presumably broken, because I realized I made a wrong measurement. Um, but it looked pretty crusty, and therefore it was, you know, fine to replace it. Um, a few caps along the line, especially uh, caps C814 and C815, that were part of uh, that are part of the horizontal circuit, and that I didn't trust anymore. C814 is 4.750 volts. Uh, then we had C554 also replaced. That was a pretty leaky cap. Um, it had uh, leak marks. C553 has been replaced as well, so this should be good to go. 